Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about some of the potential negative effects of consuming apple cider vinegar over the long term. In the world of natural health and nutrition, apple cider vinegar is considered a panacea, a cure-all substance that provides relief to pretty much every ailment. And although it's true that apple cider vinegar does have some beneficial components, mostly that it's rich in important minerals or electrolytes like potassium, and the fact that it can act as a digestive tonic, assisting with the digestion of the food you eat, particularly in the stomach by making the stomach more acidic, the fact of the matter is, there are actually plenty of negative or adverse health effects that could come about through the long-term consumption of apple cider vinegar. Now, before we discuss some of the potential downsides of consuming apple cider vinegar, keep in mind, I'm not telling you to never consume this stuff. I just wanna point out the fact that some of its short-term benefits are greatly outnumbered by the long-term negative effects. And I also just wanna make it clear that some of the short-term benefits that people reap by taking apple cider vinegar can be achieved through safer and more effective means without the potential long-term health risks. So getting right to it, one of the major reasons that apple cider vinegar may not be beneficial for long-term consumption is due to its presence of lactic acid. And this is actually one of the controversial subject matters. At least from what I see in the world of natural health and nutrition, the lactic acid content is promoted as beneficial and is what's responsible for some of its digestive support. So for example, lactic acid can actually stimulate peristalsis and help with things like constipation by evoking a bowel movement. But as you're gonna see in a moment here when we break down what lactic acid actually is, you'll see that most of its beneficial short-term effects are actually just induced by inducing some sort of stress response. So something that is often overlooked is the fact that lactic acid is actually a byproduct of the stress metabolism. So typically when the body is youthful, healthy, and stress-free, the thyroid hormone drives oxidative phosphorylation, which is the technical term for sugar metabolism. But when the body or cell is stressed, whether that's from the lack of oxygen or sometimes even the presence of oxygen, the metabolism shifts to something called glycolysis, which is basically the fermentation or conversion of glucose into lactic acid. And as Dr. Warburg pointed out in his Warburg theory on the metabolism of cancer, the cancer cell does not thrive off of glucose. It doesn't oxidize glucose and use that for energy. It actually converts glucose into lactic acid through glycolysis, either aerobic or anaerobic glycolysis, to produce the lactic acid to support the acidic extracellular environment that it needs. So he's the guy that coined the term that cancer cells cannot thrive or live in an alkaline environment, which really set the groundwork for the whole alkaline acidity movement in the world of natural health and nutrition. And what's interesting is that apple cider vinegar is often considered to be one of the most alkaline foods and consumed for that reason. But the fact of the matter is, the production of lactic acid, at least in the body, through the process of fermentation, is what contributes to the acidic extracellular your environment that supports the proliferation and growth of cancer cells. So I'm not saying that consuming lactic acid rich foods like apple cider vinegar is going to make the body acidic or the pH acidic and contribute to cancer cell growth, but there is correlations between the high consumption of lactic acid rich foods or fermented foods and increased risk or development of things like stomach cancer. So I know that this is controversial information and it opposes some of the other research that says Fermented foods have anti-cancerous effects, but I think a lot of the beneficial effects of some of the fermented foods are not contributed to its lactic acid production, but again, other beneficial components to them, maybe high amounts of vitamin C, other important minerals, and maybe some of the beneficial lactobacillus acid, which do have anti-inflammatory effects. But considering the roles that lactic acid plays in the biology of our bodies, I think that it should at least raise some sort of concern, especially when you consider that there are plenty of research studies that show that lactic acid rich foods can exert or induce a stressful effect. So one of the first things to understand is that lactic acid is not used by your cells for energy. And that's one of the basic jobs or missions of your cell is to take the various things you're exposed to and use them as energy or discard the things that are stressful and not useful to maintain health, function, and structure. So when your body consumes lactic acid, what has to happen is your liver must convert it back into glucose. However, this places an energy burden or a stress on the liver. 
causing the liver to have to use its glycogen reserves or its glucose reserves and deplete the energy of the liver to make some of that energy. So it's just a stressful process in other words. But moving along and looking at some of the other research on the known stressful effects of the consumption of vinegars and apple cider vinegar, this study examined the effects of acetate, which is acetic acid present in apple cider vinegar and other vinegars, on endothelial nitric oxide synthesis. And what they found was that the amount of phosphorylated nitric oxide was significantly increased by exposure to acetate. So this study showed that acetic acid can actually induce the synthesis or production of nitric oxide phosphorylation, and they go on to say how this can contribute to flow-mediated vasodilation in humans. Now this study is trying to promote the consumption of acetic acid and vinegar as something beneficial because it can increase circulation or vasodilation. But as I talk about in this video here, nitric oxide is not truly the beneficial health promoting substance that it's marketed to be in the world of fitness and nutritional supplements. The fact of the matter is, yes, nitric oxide will induce vasodilation, but at the expense of mitochondrial energy production. So like other stress substances, nitric oxide exerts its effect at the expense of energy production or in a stressful mannerism. So nitric oxide synthesis is not something you'd want to rely on for circulatory function or vasodilation. In fact, nitric oxide actually is only increased when carbon dioxide levels are low. So when the thyroid is low and the body's not producing enough carbon dioxide, circulation decreases. This is why poor circulation is one of the major symptoms of hypothyroidism. Fortunately, the body does have these backup chemicals, these emergency stress chemicals like nitric oxide, which will help to increase vasodilation so that way you just don't die from blood stagnation, although your thyroid and metabolism is slowing down. So the fact of the matter is nitric oxide is a stressful substance, which is just showing that the consumption of apple cider vinegar, the lactic acid and acetic acid is actually exerting a stressful effect, which is not surprising considering the fact that lactic acid is a byproduct of stress metabolism. But as I've talked about in other videos, nitric oxide is an inflammatory mediator. It's known to stimulate the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and is implicated in the pathogenesis of fibrosis. There's also plenty of studies that point out the roles of nitric oxide in everything from oxidative stress to the development of male pattern baldness and even the development of skin issues like psoriasis. Now the third and final potential negative side effect of consuming apple cider vinegar over the long term is that like other fermented foods, it can evoke a histamine response. And from my memory, I think that this is due to the synthesis of nitric oxide. I'm pretty sure nitric oxide actually induces the release of histamine through various mechanisms, which is ultimately evidence that apple cider vinegar and fermented foods can be allergenic. And as I pointed out in other videos, Histamine is not just implicated in allergies, but it's also related to inflammatory conditions. And one of the major ones we've discussed is the role of histamine in the development of scalp fibrosis or the calcification of the scalp. Now keep in mind, it's true that on the short term, apple cider vinegar is probably just gonna show beneficial effects. It's gonna aid in digestion. It might correct some electrolyte imbalances and generally make you feel better in the short term. Not to mention that its bitterness could stimulate the vagus nerve, which could help to increase the flow of bile and sort of stimulate you. So on the short term, you may see benefits, but it's very similar to the benefits you would see from a short term stress response. Over the long term, the negative effects could compound. For example, the body could start to accumulate nitric oxide in the liver, the chronic secretion and synthesis of nitric oxide might cause the vascular system to become damaged, causing blood vessels to burst, etc. You might develop allergies at some point in time, and generally speaking, you're placing a short-term chronic burden on the liver, so it may, over the long term, impair liver function. So I'm not saying to never take it and that you wouldn't experience some sort of relief or short-term benefit, but from what I see, one of the major reasons people take it is to aid in digestion, to increase the acidity of the stomach. And something that's often overlooked is the fact that people with low stomach acid production, poor digestion, are often just hypothyroid. So using apple cider vinegar and not looking at the underlying cause of the poor digestion is really just making apple cider vinegar a crutch. And if we consider the long-term negative health effects, it might actually only further contribute to digestive problems down the line by contributing to liver impairment and the liver does play a key role in thyroid function by activating the thyroid hormone. So if you're somebody taking apple cider vinegar for digestive purposes, I would just recommend taking a look at how to improve thyroid function. There are herbs like KSM 66 ashwagandha, which is known to improve thyroid function. I would also recommend lowering your estrogen levels through anti-estrogen herbs 
lowering cortisol levels, and learning more about the specific nutrients and types of foods that you'd want to consume and avoid for proper thyroid function. So this is stuff that you can find on our YouTube channel, but if you want to learn more in depth about how to heal the thyroid naturally, then definitely be sure to check out one of our online courses, or if you just want to learn how to heal the digestive system overall without relying on the long-term use of something like apple cider vinegar or even digestive enzymes, then definitely be sure to check out our Perfect Digestion course. Otherwise, it does bring this video to a close. If you found it helpful or at least interesting, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos. If you're interested in learning more beyond this YouTube channel, keep in mind that we do have a blog, an online tonic herb shop, and an online wellness academy, all with very helpful additional information and resources that you can find in the description box below.